At CapTrader, we have Willem Middelkop. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for the invitation. First time. We uh, met at the Deutsche Goldmesse. Yeah. So what's your view on gold these days? I think uh, we're in the very first part of the next leg up. We had the first leg up uh, during or after the Corona crash last year. So then we finally took out 1350, 1400, had this rapid move towards 2000, actually made a new high over 2000. Then we entered this long correction since August last year. Average uh, gold related shares went down 30, 40%. Fortunately, our fund kept quite stable over that period. And now we see an escape from that correction. And I think it will bring gold back towards its old high over 2000. I hope then that 2000 will become support in the, in, in the graph. And then you can expect a rapid move towards 2500, I think later next year. Yeah, last That's my base case. Yeah. yeah. Last month, the sentiment uh, is it's boring. Gold is boring, so to speak. Tesla, yeah, yeah. Is, Tesla is, is great. Gold is not. We're here at the um, gold mess and there are yeah. many gold mining uh, explorers and yeah. uh, companies. Uh, what's your take on them? Is this is a, a great opportunity? Well, valuations are very low now. So the sentiment was very bad, which coincides with very low valuations. Great entry point. We are fund investors. We always look for the best Companies out there are working on the most significant discoveries in gold, silver, but also copper, nickel, zinc, uranium. Um, as said, valuation is, 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 is very attractive uh, to start investing now in this space. It's very difficult to do it as a private investor. You need to do a lot of research. That's, I think, uh, for most investors, a fund like ours is, is, or an ETF is a smarter way to play this market. It's very, very difficult to pick specific stock. Um, we concentrate on the 100 best and most significant mineral discoveries, metal discoveries worldwide. We don't care if it's Australia or Canada. And we're metal agnostic. We, we do like precious metals, but we also like all the other metals. So uh, we concentrate on the top 100 best discoveries. And uh, jurisdiction, is it uh, we, Congo also in, uh, okay? We. we we can take a lot of risk in one position because we have over 100 investments. But we don't like Russia, we don't like Venezuela, I don't like Congo that much, but we had a position in Ivanhoe, we still have a position in Ivanhoe. So countries like the Congo, uh, they sound bad, but if you have a strong management group, strong company backed by the Chinese like Ivanhoe, I don't see there's any risk to invest there. Higher pi prices are higher prices through dem demand driven or is it inflationary? Both, both. I, get, I think we get a perfect storm now for uh, commodity investors because there's this wall of money, huge currency debasement uh, leading to inflation. Inflation could be uh, ignored for a long time because we had this deflationary trend, but now the inflation is back back uh, and we can't ignore it any longer. I think it will be permanent inflation. And we get the shortages. There's certain metals which are showing production deficits, sometimes even for decades. If you look at silver, there's a production deficit since the 1970s. This means that the physical world, physical demand in the year, the yearly physical silver demand um, is higher than the yearly uh, mine production. And, and, and this can't go on. And you see some rapid moves now, uranium. Uranium was very low uh, and we always said one day uranium will just jump and, and, and run and that's what you see now. And I think we'll see more of those moves. Uh, we also saw with natural gas, we saw the uh, fertilizers. I, I expect more of those moves in the next few years. Do we have to wait for a new price mechanism on the COMEX for silver to do the jump like with your uranium? I think for silver, we'll need to have some kind of revaluation by market forces. So the paper selling becomes less, um, well, dominant. Uh, but we could also see a gold uh, and silver revaluation uh, uh, initiated by maybe central bankers. Uh, uh, in the 1930s, we've seen a gold revaluation to stabilize the system during the crisis. 
when the inflation uh, <coughs> doesn't stop, central bankers can, can revalue gold to a much higher level in, in an effort to stop inflation. And many people ignore that, 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 that possibility. And I think that could be the black swan out there in the gold market. And then silver will follow. So central bankers will not revalue silver, but silver will always follow gold as the poor man's gold. Yeah, gold parks speak a lot about the uh, tonnage that uh, China has, the central bank, Chinese central bank has bought yeah. in the like, last years. Uh, is this a possibility that China comes around and makes a death blow to the US dollar and say the yuan is uh, gold backed? I don't think so. I, I, I don't expect that. I've been to China quite a bit. Two of my books have been translated into Chinese. So I, I know a bit about how the Chinese uh, think. The Chinese want to cooperate with everybody. They don't want to confrontate. You know, they don't want a war. But of course, the situation around Taiwan could get very tense uh, or even explosive. But I, I think um, it's not China, China's wish to take down the US, to take down the dollar. But of course, there's a new Cold War developing, so nasty things can happen. But it's not my base case scenario. Yeah, the Chinese would argue that Taiwan is an inner Chinese uh, yeah. conflict. Yeah, sure. Um, but of course, if you study history of China, Hong Kong and Taiwan could be seen as part of, of, of China. Uh, when we had the communist revolution uh, during the hyperinflation in 19. 46 to 49, uh, Chiang Kai-shek, the ruler, he fled to Taiwan. He took the Chinese gold with him. So I, I, I do understand the, these, these, um, yeah, these Chinese feelings. And I think they're serious on Taiwan. And that, that could be, become a major problem in the next few years. Yeah, maybe directly after the next Olympic Games. I mean, the situation is, is good for, for China, so to speak. I they, um, well, of course, they feel strong after everything which happened in Hong Kong. You know, they took over Hong Kong quite easily in the end. Not one shot was fired. Yeah, but uh, also with uh, US, they seem to be um, very poorly prepared after Afghanistan. And their uh, yeah. the current president is not in his best no, form right no, now. No, no, no. So that helps China. I think China understands. They, Maybe they, they, they need to act before another election cycle starts in, in, the, in the US. So any uh, conflict there would uh, certainly uh, help the gold price, so to speak. Yeah, I think that we see that already. There's more tension developing because of inflation, because of geopolitical situation. So I think um, the worst is behind this, of this, in this correction. And I think uh, one, one year from now, gold price will be uh, way over 2000. Um, there was much talk in the last months about transitory inflation. You uh, told uh, a few minutes earlier about permanent inflation. Yeah, I'm How not in that camp. I'm not in the temporary camp. Um, if you have constant money printing, uh, constant currency debasement, you can expect constant inflation. Actually, it would be very rare to have deflation when you have this, um, this growth of the money supply. And if you look at the graph of the money supply, uh, in the last uh, 12 to 18 months, you know, the money supply is, is, is even higher than what we've seen in the 1970s when we had the high inflation. So this, these are just the normal laws of, um, uh, ec uh, of money and, and, and economics at work. How much inflation do you reckon will we have in the coming month, years? Well, official inflation is between 4 and 6% if you trust the official numbers. But if you, we all know if you use the model from the 1980s, the official model in which um, the um, inflation was calculated in the 1980s, it shows inflation of 13%, 1-3% in the US now. Uh, you can go to shadowstats.com, yeah, the website absolutely. that shows the model. Yeah, hedonics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your take on central banks? Uh, what, uh, what tools they have left? Not, not that many. Interest rate is uh, at zero already. Uh, money printing has been in overdrive. Um, so there are not that many tricks they can, uh, they can try. Uh, but gold's revaluation is, is, is an important tool which they can use to stop inflation, to stop runaway inflation. I think it, it, it needs to be used 
somewhere in the next decade to stop us reaching hyperinflation. I, I always say we're in superinflation now, that's 10% plus. Hyperinflation, you know, is very rare. Hyperinflation is even more rare in major economies without a war. So I'm not afraid of hyperinflation, but I'm afraid of superinflation. Do you think we will have something like a crypto euro? We'll have central bank digital currencies, and the, these might be spinned as uh, like crypto currencies, but actually is a new digital layer of fiat money. Um, so I think the the rollout and the tests of central bank digital currencies will actually help Bitcoin. More people will recognize this is not a real valuable crypto currency. So more and more people will understand uh, Bitcoin it is digital gold and should be part of your asset mix. Uh, will Bitcoin not be banned at some point when there is a crypto euro around? It's very hard to ban uh, Bitcoin. You know, once a Bitcoin has been mined, is it exists. You can't undo a, a Bitcoin. Um, but we might see more financial repression. There might be some uh, closing of, of the on and off ramps from fiat to crypto and vice versa. Um, but I, I see more a trend towards regulation of the crypto space, regulation of Bitcoin. And once you regulate a new asset class, you accept it as a new asset class so people can invest in the new asset class and institutional investors are opening up their uh, portfolios to, to, to crypto like Bitcoin. And that, that's, that's, that's a big change. That's a major trend. Uh, today we had a, a presentation of Christian uh, uh, Vatsian and he told about um, that um, when, when the Bitco Bitcoin is so much connected with the financial markets already that you see yeah. when the Bitcoin is sold, you see it directly uh, in the other markets, uh, this connection. Do you think uh, this is also a reality right now that uh, Bitcoin is there? Uh, I think Bitcoin um, started to become uh, an extra asset class next to bonds, equities, real estate, cash, gold. We now have also crypto. Crypto started with Bitcoin, so Bitcoin is the core of the crypto space. So that makes Bitcoin uh, like a digital form of gold, especially for the crypto space. And all these markets are highly connected. So when, once you have inflation trades and uh, people flee to stocks and commodities because of inflation, they will also flee to Bitcoin. So these markets tend to be highly correlated. And um, that, that, that's why I think that, that Bitcoin and crypto become more like a normal asset class now. Is investing becoming very easy because of the printing press? <laughs> Can we just buy, yeah, buy, yeah. buy? Well, I always advise uh, my audience buy everything the government can't print. And of course, it won't go up every year. But I think you'll do well on the longer term if you put your money in, um, well, rare and, 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 and valuable assets. Uh, can be a house in the city, can be a house near a beach, uh, can be uh, commodities which become scarcer and scarcer. And that's why I started the Commodity Discovery Fund. You know, I was sh quite sure more and more people would be around on this planet, more and more money would be printed. And, and we use um, many commodities and we can't, we can't print commodities. So the commodities which are left will become more valuable over time. And that's why I started the fund. And what is your take on stocks like Tesla, Specs? Uh, well, <laughs> highly valued <laughs> right now. If you look at the uh, valuation of, uh, let's say, gold miners, which have a PE price earnings ratio of around 10, 15, and you compare that to the um, valuation of tech stocks, um, some people say Apple is cheap because the PE, the price earnings ratio is like under 30. Well, under 30 is still highly valued in my book. Uh, so I think that you could have a strong correction one day uh, in the Nasdaq. Maybe it has started already with the drop of Tesla. I don't know. Um, but I always want to invest in stuff which is not, v which is not valued that, that, that highly. I look for undervalued assets. And that's why I like commodities still uh, at this level. So it, be a, so it would be a great idea for anybody who has Tesla to diversify some, some of its... Uh, 
their assets. Well, I think most people are not invested 100% in Tesla. If they do, that's rather stupid. Even, I, I know uh, some people. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> even uh, Mr. Um, even the CEO decided to diversify. Eh? Um, uh, Elon Musk, he, he, uh, he put out a poll in Twitter, on Twitter to ask if he could sell, if he should sell 10%. I think that's a smart idea. It's an amazing character. I wrote a book, The Tesla Revolution, so I studied him quite a bit. And um, <laughs> it's one of those characters which are like, they're genius, but they're also a bit mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people say fake yeah. or, or is he real? What do you think? I know he's real. He's 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 real, and he's a very special uh, character. He's very talented, but it makes him vulnerable as well. And sometimes he's doing stupid things. And but I oh, I, I like his his character. Somebody special. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you.